Now, we refer to the people, to their demands, that those responsible be held to account for this catastrophe that has been underway for seven years, to their desire for real change, from a government of corruption and malice, of brokers and theft, into a country with rule of law, justice and transparency, to a country that respects its people. In front of this reality, we take a step back, to stand with the people, to fight the battle for change alongside them. The Lebanese Prime Minister there, Hassan Diab. Let's get more on this with our executive editor for the Middle East, Riyad Hamade. Riyad, uh, now that the government has uh, submitted its resignation, what is uh, the next phase going to look like here? I mean, they do have to stay stay on as a caretaker caretaker institution. Is that correct? Uh, that's right. So the the president asked uh, the Diab's government to stay on in a caretaker capacity. Um, which basically means that, you know, the day-to-day -day running of government will continue with this government, but uh, it, it will make it a lot harder for them to take any of the big decisions that are really needed right now. So this puts a big question mark over the negotiations with the IMF, which were already pretty much stuck. We had uh, the IMF uh, director general sort of uh, uh, already saying, criticizing the Lebanese government for... Uh, not really acting uh, on on resolving the issue with the IMF, which stands ready. Uh, so, you know, and we have to remember that this government came into being after months and months of horse trading between the different parties in parliament. Uh, so it, it's really hard to see that, you know, you're going to have sort of a quick resolution right now. And that's exactly what Fitch um, said to us yesterday when they talked about the ratings there. It's in selective default. And as they said, uh, elections mean delay. Um, I want to get a sense from you, from the people that you speak, though. Jean-Yves Le Drian, the French Foreign Affairs Minister, said that without reforms, this country is heading towards an economic, economic and social collapse. You, how close are we, Riyadh, to, to a form of real social Upheaval. We've seen protests. Do you think they escalate? I, I think it's a it's a great possibility. Uh, people you talk to in Lebanon, you can you sense a, an anger uh, among the Lebanese population uh, across the board, really, with the ruling class, with the ruling elite in Lebanon that really wasn't there. Uh, before uh, to this extent. So you can definitely see the uh, demonstrations uh, continuing or maybe even growing. Um, and, and I would agree. I mean, Lebanon is maybe already uh, undergoing economic collapse. I mean, how do you define economic collapse if people can't get to their money in ba uh, bank accounts when you have the beginnings of hyperinflation, uh, when you have poverty rates uh, skyrocketing, so, you know, I think Lebanon is very much on the brink. Uh, you know, it, I think it can still get worse. And any, in, in any other country, you'd say, yes, action needs to be taken. And the IMF actually set out a roadmap of what needs to be done. Um, and it needs to be done quickly. But it's very hard to see how that can happen in the current political structure.